So at the beginning of tonight's episode, I would like to open this up and start off with a poll for everyone watching live in our audience. What would you rather watch again? The Oscars from this past Sunday or Mortal Kombat? Let us know in the chat. We'll be joining you here in a second. What's going on, everybody? It is Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m. Central Time here in Austin, Texas. That means it is time for the tagline. We are the Cine Fanatics. My name is Robert Adams. I am Chris Adams. And we are here to talk about movie news and whatnot and everything that's all crazy going on this week in movies. And real quick, that's the Neither. correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Movie Fenobi, right off the bat with the correct hands. <laughs> we'll dive more into that here in a little bit, but woo. <laughs> let's just say this this whole week is woo. <laughs> um, woo. Like, uh, here's the thing. Like, I was actually kind of hoping maybe just for a little bit more of something controversial to stick in the thumbnail for this, because I really did like the idea of, like, the Mortal Kombat look versus all the movie news and controversy, but there really wasn't. I mean, <laughs> I if you really want to find it, a, I had to find an image of, like, uh, Kermit the Frog, like, all scared. <laughs> if you wanted controversy, you could have put Anthony Hopkins face on Scorpion and Chadwick Boseman's face on Sub-Zero. I don't want that much controversy. There's no reason. I don't need to do that. No, thank you. <laughs> the Oscars pit two fantastic actors against each other. No, 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 no. That was, that was a bad idea. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, we're alive for that too. <laughs> oh so Vernon, um, you are free to share your opinion. It's okay. We are also free to not highlight it if we don't want to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but feel free to share your opinion. Yeah. Next year's the movie. Yeah, because all of a sudden we just became the most popular uh, channel on YouTube talking about movies. Nobody else. Like, <laughs> Could you, you know, imagine we're still... if we're live right now and literally just thousands of viewers just popped out of nowhere and just started watching us? Yeah, like can can someone like uh, was it raid us like you do on Twitch? Yeah, right. <laughs> Just raid a YouTube channel. But yeah, the, like there's no other movie YouTube channels. The Cinefanatics becomes the only one. Some some weird like YouTube governing Thanos wearing a YouTube controlling Infinity Gauntlet just snapped all the other movie YouTube channels out of existence. And here's the idea that I have if that was to happen. First thing we're going to do, we're going to start a movie trivia game show on our YouTube channel. <laughs> we'll call it the uh, movie trivia schmuck off. <laughs> Wow, I don't know if we can call it that. <laughs> the schmuck off. It's catchy. It's catchy. Uh, <laughs> the tagline is "Get schmucked." <laughs> Get schmucked. <laughs> what are you doing? Look, if speaking, someone, I'm getting schmucked. If someone wanted to do the discount schmodown, I mean, let's be honest. That is that would be like the bad like knockoff at like the dollar store that you see that some great value schmodown. Yeah. <laughs> Great value schmodown. The schmuck off. Oh, good lord. We are a anyway. family channel, by the way. Yeah. Anyways, uh, thank y'all all for being here as we get this started tonight. As usual, if you have any questions, comments, uh, feel free to drop them in the stream lab or like Movie Finobi did because he's a leader. You could drop in the super chat like he did there in the chat, and we will highlight his comment and say thank you, Movie Finobi, for that super chat. Uh, also, make sure you follow us on patreon.com slash cinefanatics. We got more stuff coming up uh, there. Uh, I do believe we are doing another. We're going to do another movie trivia scrimmage night. I believe that is this coming Thursday as well. We did one, yeah. like uh, I guess, like last week or the week before. It's, uh, time is irrelevant to me right now. But uh, we did one, but we kind of dropped it last minute. And I'm like, I want to do another one to give to everyone. So, yeah, we announced it on our Discord. If you're at the $1 tier on our Patreon, you're a part of our Discord. You'll see these messages. Uh, but we will be doing another one. I believe it's Thursday night, probably still around the usual uh, 9 Central, 7 uh, Pacific, 10 Eastern. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be if you're on the Maverick tier at, yeah. Sorry, I'm, just, I'm getting like messages all of a sudden coming in. <laughs> so uh, 
I have really bad ADD, y'all. <laughs> very uh, bad. So, yeah. That's so the one who's very... dancing over here too. Not a single sound of music in his head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, that's uh, Thursday night. And yeah, we hope to see you there. Just hop on the Maverick tier on Patreon. Anyways, moving on. Uh, what do we have coming up? Oh, we got so much stuff coming up. Let me t- tell you what's coming up. Uh, is that next week? Is that thing starting next week? I believe uh, it is. Um, yes, it is starting next week. Uh, it's true. Uh, s- what we have on the upcoming. Uh, coming up next week, we are going to begin. Like this last week, we had our finale for uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, otherwise known as Fat, Fat Wuss. It's now known as Cat Wuss, by the way. If you watch the show, Cat Wuss. <laughs> uh, we're going to be continuing doing breakdowns. We have the week off, obviously, this week. But next week begins The Bad Batch on Disney+, Plus, which is the spinoff of The Clone Wars. So if you've seen The Clone Wars, you saw the last season, you know who The Bad Batch are, and you, you know the show that they're getting. Uh, I'm going to be breaking down The Bad Batch. And as of right now, I'll go ahead and say this since it's happening next week. We'll go ahead and drop who, at least one of the guests who will pop up on this show, hopefully somewhat consistently. Uh, but starting Friday, we're I'm going to be breaking it down with not this fool who hasn't seen Clone Wars, but with one of the movie guys himself, Adam Witt, will be joining on the breakdown of The Bad Batch. So you're going to want to hang out with us and as we break down what sounds like going to be four episodes next week in one breakdown. So it's going to be it's going to be intense. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> That was anticlimactic. Uh, yeah, with Adam Witt uh, co-hosting this show, talking about Bad Batch, I now want to sit down and watch all of the Clone Wars as fast as possible so I can, too, keep up with the show because he's just a delight. I mean, theoretically, you just got to watch the last season. Not even yeah. Honestly, you don't even need to watch the full last season. Just There's like a three or four episode arc that you just need to watch. <laughs> I was saying, isn't there like one episode called The Bad Batch and you just watch that episode and you know everything and then you just move on? <laughs> Somewhat. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Chris Adams, Adam Witt, Chris Witt. Chris Witt, sounds, Chris Witt sounds like a curse word we should not be saying on this channel. Ah, Chris Witt. Ah, Chris Witt. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, also, since Vernon has decided to drop it in the chat, if you would like to plug this as well. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, I was going to see if Vernon wanted to pop this in, if he was ready to promote this or not, but yes. Uh, this Friday is when his a fan's view of the FCL pops up with a special guest. Me! I'm going to be on there. I'm going to be talking about FCL. I'm going to get fickle. The fickle? You're I'm going to get fickle. fickle. I'm going to get fickle because we can't say the other one. Uh, I'm going to get fickle. Oh, yeah, we can't say that one. <laughs> I'm going to get fickle with Vernon on, on the fan's view of the fickle. Yeah. And... I look forward to it. I've never... Outside was it? We did show me the money. I've never really like been the subject of interviews ever. So I'm kind of excited to be on the interview circuit. And obviously Vernon is our trusted, one of our trusted moderators here. So I look forward to being in his valiant and wonderful care. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything else you want to talk about while I get this other one real quick. Mm. Uh, do I want to go ahead and just... Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll go ahead and plug this now, and then we can also do it at the end of the show, too. Yep. Um, this Friday, those of you who are, again, in our Discord or been paying attention to anything I post on Twitter, I will be starting my first ever Twitch stream. It's going to be, boom, twitch.tv slash MLP. It's going to be the first stream, Friday, April 30th, starting at 11 Pacific, 1 Central, 2 Eastern. That is in the afternoon. That's right. I'm actually doing something in the afternoon, not in the evening. And it's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, busting out a new game. Uh, new Pokemon Snap comes out that day. So I'm going to be throwing that up on the twi- on the Twitch. On oh, my Switch on the Twitch. Uh, possibly playing another game too during that time. But I'll probably be live for about uh, four, four and a half hours. So it'll be it'll be a good first stream to to get under the belt there. So if you guys are available and want to come hang out or throw me on in the background 
I would greatly appreciate it because I'm starting off with the first one and I'm already going to be on the road to affiliate as fast as possible. So it would be huge help for followers and for consistent viewers for me. I appreciate that. Yeah, so y'all go check that out. Um, the Oh, well, since we're on the subject still, yeah. Uh, mostly my Switch. Eventually, I want to do community games, in which case it'll be stuff that everybody can access on the internet, like Jackbox or, uh, you know, from various apps like Among Us or something like that. I know probably by the time I get to being able to do that, Among Us will be completely dead, but I don't care. I like it. I'll play it. I'd be down for some Among Us. That's that's always fun. Among Us. <laughs> Among um, us. So that's everything you're doing. The only thing, uh, well, a couple of things we've got going on, I guess. Um, tomorrow night, I will be over on the Pajukin, the PJ Campbell Network. We will be talking about Meteora, the second uh, Linkin Park album. So that's going to be tomorrow night, I believe, like still roughly around, yeah, 10 Eastern, so 9 Central, uh, 7 Pacific. So, yep, that's tomorrow night. Uh, we already talked about the first album, Hybrid Theory. We're going to be talking about Meteor. It's going to be a lot of fun because I could talk Linkin Park all day. But that doesn't have anything to do with movies unless we're talking about the, the Transformers soundtrack. So moving on. Pajugan. Uh, the other thing that I think we want to plug real quick before we get into everything else is next week is May 4th, uh, Star Wars Day. May the 4th um, be with you. Yeah, so may the 4th be with y'all before we get there. <laughs> but... Yeah. Not because it's Star Wars Day, but we will be moving tagline up a little earlier that night. I believe we're going to go. We're looking at what eight central? I think um, eight. Yeah, eight central, six Pacific, uh, nine Eastern. Uh, we're going to move that up a little because I'm going to uh, be a guest on another show that's later that night. So we need to have room for both shows to coexist. So uh, stay tuned to social media, uh, particularly mine, which you can see down here below me. So you can find out what show it is and what I'm doing. So, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll send out a reminder for this as well. Yeah. Hacked pack night. Mm -hmm. anyway. Anyways, that's all that we got coming up. Um, you, you all know the usual. If you're part of the Patreon, and everything, you know, all the stuff that's coming up, you know, all our normal shows. So. We got a bunch of bunch of stuff to hang out with and, and do and whatnot, and I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, let's move on to movie news. Already? I don't know. You don't want to catch up on anything else? Uh, I didn't catch up on anything else. Well, personal, how have you been this past week? Oh, I've... Good people know how you are. I mean, everybody knows my struggles. Everybody knows the things I fight with on the daily. My pains. It might be. Uh... Still working on those. Still doing good. We're, my head is upright right now, so we're all right. But other than that, you know, it's it's good. It's good. It's good. It's all right. It's going. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Other other than Twitch starting, it's going to be fa fantastic. Um, me, I'm just really busy. <laughs> uh, I'm actually uh, moving to a new department at my job, so I will no longer be uh, stuck in a lobby helping customers i will be answering their calls over the phone and it's probably going to be much better for our how we work what cheering sound effect yay yeah uh i am i am like uh, looking forward to it because i'm going to like this change i feel like this is going to be a good change both for myself mentally and for our channel because it's going to give me an actual solid schedule like I'm not sitting here like I don't know when I'm gonna be off next. And, Who knows? But and uh, everybody have... knows if he's better mentally, I'm better mentally. Oh yeah, yeah. Everyone knows that. <laughs> the whole world's better mentally if I'm good mentally. Anyways, um, I don't know why I'm the focus of everything, but pff, I didn't ask for it. Um, <laughs> uh, what movies did you watch this week? I don't know if I popped on anything new. Um, no, I. I didn't have anything new. You have something new, but I didn't have anything new because I didn't watch that flaming garbage. What that? What I didn't watch that uh, pile of trash. That oh, uh, sorry. What I didn't watch whatever movie you watched. Oh, I didn't even not notate them on my letterbox. Anyways, uh, yeah. So <laughs> it was that great? <laughs> well, there's three of them. 
uh, right before the Oscars, I did catch up and watch The Father yeah. and uh, Minari, uh, both of which were, were really good. I, I enjoyed both of them. Now, the thing is, is Father was a little hard to watch. Uh, if you know the subject matter of the movie, uh, they the movie is filmed in like an immersive experience. They put you kind of like in Anthony Hopkins character's point of view. So if you're not ready to be catching on to stuff changing without any notice, it it, it could be a little hard to grasp exactly what's happening. But if you're not ready to battle with dementia. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but it's 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 a really good like once you understand how that movie is done, and especially by the time you get to the end and you see how everything was really like set up, it's really good. It, it was it was very well done. Yeah. Um, and I I definitely agree with him getting the Oscar. He's very well deserving of that. And we'll talk more <gasps> about the Oscars here in a little bit. I didn't oh, say you. over anyone else. I just said I'm, he himself is very you. well deserving of it. <laughs> How dare you support one of the greatest actors of all time winning an award for a fantastic job in yeah. a role? Um, did. And Minari was really good. And I was a big fan of the grandmother in that movie getting the award. Uh, at the Oscars, because the stuff that she goes through in that movie was also very well done. So, uh, anyways, that's what I but, caught up on. But well, the hot, the hot topic was: Does she know what Brad Pitt smells like? <laughs> uh, I believe she does now. <laughs> I don't know. No, she doesn't. She's she's not a dog. <laughs> I'm literally quoting her. Uh, yeah, did you hear about that? A reporter backstage asked her. Because she was like fangirling mm -hmm. over like, oh, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, which is fine. It's great. It's Brad Pitt. But like I'd fangirl also, too. Also, like she just won an award for a fantastic performance in a movie. Like maybe you talk about that instead of they're asking her, what do you think? Uh, what does Brad Pitt smell like? And she was like, I don't know. I'm not a dog. That I don't smell. I don't really smell people. That is a little weird. Like you just won like one of the best awards. You're the first. I think she was the first. uh she was just the first Korean woman to win Best Supporting Actress. I don't know if it was like she's the first uh, person of color or anything more detailed than that. But I know she was like the first Korean woman to win Best Supporting Actress. And say you win that and then they're like, hey, so what's your favorite item to eat at McDonald's? Hey, who gives a crap? I just won an award. <laughs> like This is a dumb question. You like the you like the year award that you just got? You also like chicken nuggies? Yeah. Anyways, yeah, so uh, let's move on to movie news. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about these Oscars, as if we weren't talking about them already. This was a nice segue here. Ushered in. Yeah. Uh, so the Oscars happened this past Sunday. It was a... Uh, they did. They happened. It was a very interesting event. It was. It was interesting. Uh, it like it kind of started off a, a, a little weird just because we had no idea what to expect with an Oscar presentation during the pandemic. We've seen other award shows uh, beforehand, and some of them have gone on pretty well. So, uh, some of them were going to have like glitches and uh, mess ups. And that's to be expected because again, no one was knew how to do any of this. We weren't yeah. prepared, and. So they seem like they were trying to be as prepared as possible. Uh, they were in Union Station instead of the Dolby Theater, uh, which if you so, like from the wide images, you could definitely tell they're at like a giant train station because it looked like they were in like a giant hallway. Like you yeah. saw the, the breeze through in the background and stuff. So you, they left it where it was wide open, pretty well ventilated. Uh, so that was... That was one change that felt a little weird. It, the Dolby Theater has a very prestigious feel to it when you watch a, a an award show film there. Yeah. So that was a little weird. The stage was small. There didn't look like there was much fanfare given to the to to the way it looked at all. And then of course you had like a lot of other people were at other venues like via satellite. So everyone looked like they were pretty well socially distanced and. Yeah, it, it, it was, it's just what had to happen. It felt it felt very like personal, very very smaller, more more meaningful. It actually felt more meaningful to a degree. Like obviously, you know, there's the you apply meaning when you're able to do like a grand 
show a grand gesture and, and make something big and wonderful out of everything. But then there's also the look, we're all just a bunch of people who love the art. We're going to sit around together, celebrate it, give statues to each other and celebrate the art that we made, which is fantastic. I love that more of that, please. Mm -hmm. And the, here's the thing, like getting into it, the show was, was doing great. It, I was actually really into, you know, what they were doing, <clears throat> you know, uh, then of course, all of a sudden when directors popped up randomly towards closer toward the beginning of the show, rather than its usual spot towards the end of the awards, that was kind of a little bit jarring. Well, but, they didn't even, they didn't even start off with the supporting. Usually it starts with the supporting actor and actress. Yeah. One of the big yeah. awards to hook people right at the beginning. Yeah. So it, it, it was kind of, it was kind of a little bit different there at the beginning, but for the most part, the show was running smooth. It was like, okay, this is good. I like, I like what they're doing here. I was kind of, for someone who is expecting the entire thing to be like Zoom, the fact that they did any kind of in-person celebration at all was, to me, refreshing. It's nice to see in-person celebration after a year of just complete crap in the entire world. Like, it's nice to see people together in a room together, celebrating together. Like that's, that was beautiful to me. Loved it. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel like, cool, life is getting back to normal. Slowly, but surely. Problem is, is that when it hit, when it hit that in memoriam section, that's kind of where it started to, first of all, it like breezed through the in memoriam with like, an, a song that was in like a major key too. It wasn't even in a minor key. Like usually like you want a minor key, like I'm sad. I'm being mm -hmm. reflective. It was like a major key. It was like a happy song, which I, I can kind of get the theme there. We're, we're celebrating. We're happy about the lives that these we're, people yeah. had and, the, and their art that they put into the world before they left us. And that's great. But it also was like, it was super strange. Like I didn't even have time to like read most of the names. They were on the screen and gone by the time it's like, what was happening? And then from the in memoriam section on, it was just the whole thing just feels like it just crashed and burned. I don't, I don't know why it was, it was so rushed. Like one of the things a lot of people were all pointing out is they didn't show the clips from the movies that they were talking about. Typically you would show like, uh, depending on what you're presenting, say you're presenting makeup and costume, you would show a visual representation of makeup and costume. I mean, this is, we're talking about movies and film. One of the very bare bones basics of that is show, don't tell. Well, they told us and didn't show us anything. So that was weird. Um, and then, of course, you had one of the things they did. I don't know why I said, of course, because it wasn't normal. But uh, in some of these cases, they were talking about the nominees, but then giving you like trivia about the nominees. Like uh, the grandmother from Minari, she likes the smell of Brad Pitt. She's also nominated for Best Supporting Actress for Minari. Like, just weird off-the-wall trivia things about him. Like, that's... No, show me their performance. Show me why she's nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Yeah. Um, the downside about Minari, though, is if they showed you exactly why she was nominated, it kind of gives away, like, her character arc in that movie, which is very, like, important and is definitely worth why she got nominated. So I, they just, I guess they want to spoil that one as a example, but yeah, none of the other things, they didn't show any of the like movies and stuff. Uh, all the musical performances were all uh, relegated to the pre-show, which I think that they've done that before. Haven't they? Didn't they do that last year? I don't know. I can't remember if they did that last year or not. Uh, I feel like I've seen that before where they, they moved them to the pre-show. Just to just to make the show a little a little faster, um, but uh, yeah, the downside to that is if you didn't watch the pre-show, you don't know you didn't watch any of the musical numbers. So when it came time to announce, uh, like the best original song, you're like, unless you just so happen to know those songs, right? Unless so you were paying attention to like movie soundtracks and stuff that happened. Yeah. Now. So that was all a little strange. And then yeah, like you were saying, we got to the in memoriam. It breeze through that um and of course there's i i haven't checked yet but i'm almost certain that there's like the very long list of people who weren't mentioned on there um or if they were you they were there for like half a second and 
no one saw their name. So, yeah, and then the show just crashed after that. It really yeah. was at that point uh, because they moved everything completely out of like weird order. Uh, you are used to watching the Oscars best pictures at the end uh, before, like right before his best actor, actress, director, all of that comes before. And that's not how they did things. Like they came back from that, like final commercial or so, or that one commercial, they came back and uh, they did best picture. And what was weird on this is like, as Garth is pointing out, Garth did not watch the Oscars, but he watched a very good watch along show. Well, thank you, Garth. <laughs> um, we were we so we did our annual watch along. It was the ninety third annual watch along for the Cine Fanatics, and uh, we had a couple of guests on there. One of our guests is uh, was uh, Jessica Jessica Schloth from the uh, movie trivia Schmodown, and she was watching it live on TV. The rest of us were pretty much watching it like streaming, so therefore she was more ahead than we were so during that commercial break it came back from commercial for her while we're all still watching commercial she's like oh they're they're uh, doing the award for best picture and we're sitting here like wait what how quickly did they run through actor and actress because they just came back from the commercial and now you're talking about they're doing the nominations for best picture did we fall that far behind that you're That's already that far? You, you ran through like hold up you Wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, that was a little strange. Um, but yeah, they came back from commercial and did best picture. And we're like, uh, well, this is going to be kind of anticlimactic because that's the big award of the whole night. It's the one that everybody tunes in for. Like, now, here's the thing. I understand from the perspective of this last year in terms of movies is kind of insane for general audiences. The general audiences being the ones who will make up the the ratings numbers for the Academy Awards. Uh, most of these people didn't realize that these movies were out there because people are used to going to theaters and seeing commercials for movies that are coming out into theaters that they can go buy tickets for and sit down in a movie theater and watch. Uh, they don't get, you know, necessarily see the commercials for the movies that are popping up on random streaming service A and random streaming service B. So they don't know that they can go to HBO Max and see Judas and the Black Messiah. They don't know that they can go to wherever Nomadland was at or wherever, you know, any of these other movies were popping up at. So I, I understand if it's like the, the pomp and circumstance over best picture this year for general audiences isn't as high as it normally is possibly um and, and that kind of makes sense yeah um so we don't know best if that's enough of a reason to move it though yeah uh we did best picture and then they moved into uh best actress and best actor um best actress no problem i mean they gave it to uh francis mcdormand uh so uh, i think that was five like second her... speech yeah <laughs> well everyone that was the other thing too is they didn't time as rush as the show kind of felt they didn't time anyone's uh talking yeah. about their speeches that they gave um and some of them gave some really long speeches uh some of them were very impassionate and like daniel kalua telling us that his parents had sex that was a little <laughs> weird but uh <laughs> like, okay that's a highlight <laughs> yeah um <laughs> It's it's hard out here for a pomp and circumstance. Good job, good job, Garth. Nice. Uh, so yeah, speeches aside, then we got to best actor, and I mean, I'm pretty much in general, everyone was thinking it's going to go to Chadwick Boseman. He um, got the Golden Globe. It looked like they moved things around to save the the well, win yeah. for Chadwick Boseman at the end, just because it's like we want to go out on this show with celebrating. Uh, a dearly departed actor's life and his work and everything. <laughs> which so, which no, note to the producers, you might want to have at least one person open that envelope before. Or just, just don't do that. Just don't do that. <laughs> or, 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 yeah, just leave it best picture and just don't do that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, best actor, uh, again, Chadwick Boseman was the favorite to win, and rightly so went to Anthony Hopkins, who, like I said before, did a fantastic, phenomenal performance in The Father. 
yeah. everyone's saying that easily his best performance since Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs 1991. But she's a big deal because Anthony Hawkins puts on a masterclass of performances every single time that he's in a movie, including whatever that Transformers movie that he popped up in. He was probably the best part of that movie. I don't know. I didn't see it. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. Probably good performance <laughs> by him. Still not going to watch that movie. Um, yeah. Anyways, so the thing that we learned afterwards is that, well, okay, let me, let me backtrack a bit. So he won the award, but he wasn't there. He wasn't there in person. He wasn't there via satellite. And so Joaquin Phoenix accepted the award on his behalf and shows over. We're done. Go home. And I remember we're doing the watch along. We're like, it's over. This, That's this it. This is over. The, this is the end. What? <laughs> That made the La La Land Moonlight fiasco look so much better. <laughs> that made the La La Land Moonlight fiasco look like an Oscar award winning movie. Yeah, pretty much. I just I just saw like I saw a joke the next day where someone was saying, like, yeah, and Warren Beatty is somewhere going, whew, at least we're not the uh most awkward ending to the Oscars anymore. Like yeah, that right? was super awkward, just up and done out of there. But that was and only a couple was, years ago. Like, come on, yeah. guys, get it together. <laughs> and then it was like the next day that uh, supposedly we learned that uh, Anthony Hopkins wanted to give a speech via Zoom, but the producers, I guess the producers just didn't want to get Zoom involved with with it, which, I mean, I guess as someone who knows, uh, well, like as us who know how this video setup thing is behind the scenes, uh, zoom may not have been a viable option maybe skype wasn't as well that's why they did like everything is via satellite probably a more trustworthy connection ish i don't work with satellites i work with zoom and skype and whatnot and stream it out i mean here, here's the thing anthony hopkins is in his 80s he is the oldest an, person to win that award yeah he's an elderly gentleman I don't know. We don't know if he has been vaccinated yet or not. He was at his home in, I believe, was it Wales or England? Whatever. You know, he's, yeah. he's at his home over across the pond. And he was not about to get on an airplane and fly to Los Angeles to be at an award show. And the off chance that maybe he wins. I get it. But here's the thing, because of his age, because of his circumstance, I believe that the Academy Awards could have and definitely should have made an exception for him in terms of finding a way to get him a video call in some sort. Yeah. Uh, I don't care about this, any of this. We're not doing Zoom. We're not allowing that. Find a way. Figure it out. If it's a If it's a legal partnership thing, figure it out. If it's a situation where you know, oh, we just, we don't feel like it, it fits the aesthetic of the show. I don't care. Figure yeah. it out. Like, whatever excuse they have, it's a dumb one. So, I'll, I'll flat out say, it. I don't run the show. I don't know the show. I don't care. It's a dumb excuse. They should have at least gotten some way to have him give a, a speech at the end. That would have helped uh, so much. I mean, I mean, it, it was produced by Steven Soderbergh, who has directed an entire movie on an iPhone. You could make it work. Let's just say that, like, it, it, it's doable. So pull him up on your iPhone, on your Zoom app, on your phone, and then hardwire the iPhone into a video feed. Done, pretty much. Like, come um, on. now in Anthony Hopkins' favor, and, and absolutely nothing against Anthony Hopkins. He is the ultimate consummate professional of all this. He released a video the next day, like basically his uh, award speech the next day. Nice. Uh, I think it was Wales, like the nice green background, the landscape behind him. Just gorgeous video. The most respectful video to both the Academy and to Chadwick Boseman. It, it, fantastic. Fantastic what acceptance. Wonderful man. Just a lovely, mm -hmm. lovely individual. Like. Anthony Hopkins is great. You can't you can't be angry or mad at Anthony Hopkins. And anybody who actually is is just stupid. Um, yeah, I'm I'm coming for I'm coming for throats tonight. Um, but yeah, the wait, wait till I talk about Mortal Kombat and the throats I'm going to go after. Nice, <laughs> get over here. Uh, get over here. No, the issue is 
the way it looked is that they were trying to set everything up for the big celebration of Chadwick Boseman at the end. That that is exactly what it looked like. And mm-hmm. for all of us watching, that's exactly what we thought we were gonna happen. We're like, okay, cool, we're setting up. Chadwick Boseman's gonna he's gonna win in the end, and we're gonna we're gonna be having some fun here and and crying and and all sorts. Of, like I was preparing to have tears of flowing and everything. And then, as I've heard others say, uh, it sucked the air right out of the room when it wasn't Chadwick Boseman, which is fine. It doesn't have to be. But when it wasn't Chadwick Boseman, and then it was like, well, the winner's also not here. And we moved everything around for no reason. All right. Good night, everybody. Sponsored by We Delta. don't have anything. We don't. Yeah. We don't have anything else planned. Good night. I, I said this in our watch along. It's hilarious. That train wreck was sponsored by an airplane. <laughs> at, at a train station. <laughs> at a train station. <laughs> That's I, something. I, saw, That's I, something. I did see. I saw that joke a lot. The train wreck at a train station. That was so good. <laughs> Perfect. Good yeah. lord. Yeah. Uh, um, so it was, it was basically, to sum it up, uh, let's hurry up and get over this pandemic. Everybody, wear your dang mask. Get vaccinated and whatnot, and let's have a better Oscars next year. <laughs> Right, now, for the watch along, though, the our watch along was a lot of fun. Like everyone yeah. we had on, uh, Rachel Silvestrini, we had Sean Sullivan and uh, Andres Gallego, uh, with like us. Said Jess was on there, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, everyone was fantastic. We, I had a blast doing that, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I had a blast recovering from it the next day, too. <laughs> I was celebrating a little, a little much. <laughs> I was perfectly fine. I had seltzer water the entire time. Uh, anyway, sparkling water. The thing about it is, is that, like, here's the thing. We did the watch along. We watched it. We're sitting here talking about it now. What's what? What are we talking about when we're talking about this this show? We're talking about the train wreck that happened, right? Mm-hmm. We're not talking about who won. We're not talking about the great job that they all did for winning their awards. This is how this show is going to go down. This is what we're going to remember going into next year. It isn't that Chloe Zhao is the first ever uh, woman of color to win best director. Second ever woman to win best director. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't the myriad of other individuals who, who won their awards celebrating the art celebrating, you know, the things that they've done in their various departments. It's wow. Did you guys see that train wreck of a show? And like, I'm partly holding us to a candle for doing that. Like we're about as much to blame as anybody else in this case, but it's the fact that that's the way the producers produced the show, put it together that caused everything to just fall apart in the end. Yeah. Um, that's what I say. It's like, awful. Uh, like uh, congrats to everyone who won. Um, there, I didn't see too many like actual controversies over who won and who didn't. I mean, except oh. for the best actor. Um, I, I, we did like to say like the best supporting actor and actress both went to a person of color. So the they they are doing good at working on diversity in uh, with the Oscars. Uh, so yeah. that was nice to see, but. Yeah, otherwise, uh, the awards themselves, who won them and everything, seems per- that all seemed pretty good and reasonable. Anyways, <laughs> congrats well, yeah. to who won, because y'all are all watching us. So <laughs> here's, anyway. here's, here's real quick before we move on from that. What I, what I expect out of next year, what's not going to happen, but what I expect, and maybe you'll be, remember to look back on this then. Uh, I, one, I expect it to be, you know, back at the Dolby Theater, as Brian Cranston so elegantly told us during that one cutaway. Uh, two, bring a host back with some jokes and some fun stuff in between the awards. Mm-hmm. That is, God, that is needed so bad. I, we need um, hosts on this. I don't like when they go hostless. Yeah. And then three, put everything back to normal. Save Best Picture for last, director before that. Actor before that, actress before that. Put the musical performances back in the main show. Uh, maybe. If they, they, you got to find the balance to saving time too, and that's one thing they did actually do pretty good at is saving a lot of time. But okay, we'll save time by not putting the musicals, but at least stretch the in memoriam out to like the full amount of time it needs to take to honor those people. Good lord. Yes. <laughs> 
that's what I expect to see. Will they do that? Probably not at this point. Yeah. No. But we'll see. Who knows? Hopefully the Academy's watching this live stream tonight and they'll fix those problems because of us. You better. You better. You watch. <laughs> you watch. You better. Yeah. Uh, anyways, let's move on to some other movie news that doesn't have us like feeling bad about movies and life and stuff. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna say like, look at Vernon's comment here. Had Chadwick not passed away, with the uh, the thing is, is I I fully believe Chadwick Boseman still would have been nominated for that performance because that was such a good performance. Uh, I don't. Now, here's like I don't know exactly how the Academy works. I don't know if, yeah, and and that's this is the point I want to make too. I don't know if like the Academy, whoever makes up the voting for that, if they might lean a little more heavily to someone who's passed away that year, uh, which I, I mean, I kind of get why, but I kind of hope not. I'm hoping that people are like nominated and they're winning based off of the merit the their skill their talent their life that they put into that role and it's not just a hey you were you're nominated for award because you passed away so uh the thing is uh, back to this question had he not passed away i believe he still would have been nominated and he probably still would have been a favorite to win just based off of his character uh the uproar i believe is just in the way the show like abruptly ended so I think that most of that uproar would still be there. Now, if you're talking about the uproar in Chadwick Boseman not winning compared, uh, possibly. But that's going to go back to talking about like uh, the Oscars maybe still needing to work on being more diverse. I, I don't know. I, I, since that didn't happen, I don't know how to explain it. And again, we're not the producers. We don't know exactly what they look at. We're not the Academy and how they think, so. For me, for my opinion, what I would say is that if he were still alive, if, uh, and I never saw it confirmed, so it is still strictly uh, speculation on the idea that they moved everything around for the Chadwick Boseman send-off. Um, if he were still alive, given that idea, they wouldn't have moved stuff around because he would have been alive just like every other person who was nominated. So I don't think you see the same uproar there. But I think it's, I think the uproar, the uproar is because they moved, they shifted stuff around. The uproar is because of that. Uh, Chadwick Boseman definitely deserved to be nominated. Uh, I watched that movie and holy crap, did that man act his heart out in that, in that movie specifically. There's like a few scenes that I can think of specifically. Um, you say you bring up the same thing about Heath Ledger, uh, that's the same with Heath Ledger. Like he, that that movie came out before Heath Ledger died. Like he died like shortly there after the movie was released. Um, I don't remember like how many weeks, if it was a month, whatever, but there was a period of time where that movie was out and he was alive. Mm, no, I don't think so. I think I it believe, was, I believe right, so. Yeah. I think it was right after cause he quickly, uh, he went from there and started filming, uh, Dr. Parnassus and then he passed away in the middle of them filming that. And that was like in uh, December or January. And Dark Knight came out the following August. Oh, uh, I I seem to remember him being alive when Doc, when Dark Knight came out. And there being a period of time there. Okay. Well, I guess he did pass before it came out. Vernon says he passed before it came out. Either way, if I, if I watch that movie in a vacuum, if I watch Ma Rainey's Black Bottom in a vacuum regardless of what happened in real life, I'm looking at those two performances. I'm going, those are stellar performances. Mm -hmm. I am looking strictly at just the person portraying the role and how they did. For me personally, I would nominate both of them, no matter what, regardless of what happened to them in real life. I believe that they both deserve to be nominated strictly on their performances, not based on whether they lived or not. So, that's that's what I'm. That's the direction I come from on that. If there are people within the academy who think like I do, then I can see why somebody would. I, I, I can see the situation where you know they are still nominated regardless of you know what happened in real yeah. life. So, anyways, um. Let's move on to other movie news because apparently other things besides the Oscars happened this past week. 
No. Um, <laughs> I don't know what, but no, they didn't. <laughs> uh, Godzilla versus Kong director Adam Wingard is in talk to direct to direct another MonsterVerse flick. Here's the thing with this right off the bat: after that movie, after Godzilla versus Kong was released, uh, they um, who was it like Warner Brothers or they announced like uh, thank you for watching and basically they said something that sounded like a send off of the MonsterVerse movies. Like the, yeah. this is it that we're ending it, and that was it. There was no like in the movie itself. There was no post credit scene. There was no wink, wink, nod, nod to something else potentially coming out. So no. moving on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're saying. So, like now, all of a sudden, it's like, oh well, this movie performed very good. Then well, we'll go ahead and do another one then. Which I mean, makes sense. That's how movies are made, but. Like it seemed like they they were done. They were putting a cap on this this connected universe. And yes, I didn't expect them to finish with Godzilla versus Kong. I expected them to make more. So if they were doing any kind of like, yeah, we're done, uh, that would have caught me more by surprise than the than otherwise. But what doesn't catch me off what doesn't catch me off surprise is that they are bringing Adam Wingard back to do another movie because yeah, Godzilla versus Kong was kind of successful, specifically given us trying to come out of a pandemic right now and get butts into seats in the theaters. They did a pretty good job with that. <laughs> I did want the giant spinning turtle. Yeah. Um, so I guess you put on here that they're, that they're talking about son of Kong. Yeah. So reports right now are saying that son of Kong is the title that's kind of going around right now in terms of what it could be about. And uh, that title alone, like, I don't know if there is a son of Kong, like I'm not, I'm not that familiar with you know the whole monster, there is side of things. So Son of Kong is something that's foreign to me. I don't, I don't, I don't know what Son, what of, Son Kong of Kong is, is foreign to a lot of us. <laughs> yeah, but is it just a smaller Kong? It's like another, another smaller like ape. Uh, yeah, he he gets it on with Queen Kong. Uh, Mighty Joe Young. No, nice. no, no. For the Queen Kong, you get five whatever minutes and timeout. Anyways, five moving minutes. on with the show tonight. Um, <laughs> I do kind of want to see it then potentially go like the, uh, was it Mecha Ghidorah route? That would be interesting. Yeah. There's at least like a dozen or so like monsters that Godzilla has fought at some point in his very illustrious career. Uh, that I would love to see, you know, turned into the the monsters that we see in these movies. Like, there's there's so many more monsters within Godzilla's lore that would just look so cool on the big screen nowadays. Fighting him, so I think there's I think there's plenty of room. I think mm -hmm. there's plenty of room to do more. Uh, I don't know about Son of Kong. Yeah, I don't know I'm what not... other pivot, pivotal thing you could be going towards. I'm not really going to judge something though, based off of just a title and not even just a title. That's kind of speculation right now and not even confirmed. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll be game for more though. When are we getting Van Helsing or Phantom? Uh, that would be the universal monsters. Oh gosh. Monster verse, which they're trying, I guess again, but I don't know. Are they though? I mean, we had the invisible man, which was, not tied to like a universe, but they're still trying to like release these properties and get them out there in front of eyes again, kind of reboot them all. I don't know if they're really like linking, planning on linking them all together anymore, especially because yeah. that was what Blumhouse who kind of fronted that one. So, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, anyways, uh, speaking of big egomaniacs picking up things and throwing them around, uh, it looks like Russell Crowe is going to sign on. He signed on to play Zeus in uh, Thor Love and Thunder. Which, I'm trying to make uh, the connection real quick. Is Kong an egomaniac? Yeah, but kind of. They are oh. pretty big and yeah. Anyways, yeah. So Russell Crowe is uh, possibly going to be playing Zeus in Thor Love and Thunder. I don't know how big his role is going to be, but this is this brings on the idea that we're going to start going like towards the Greek gods also existing within the MCU, uh, which brings in the possibility of fellow Avenger Hercules 
who's one of Thor's best friends, also potentially popping up at some point. This is kind of interesting, and I do like uh, Ru- Russell Crowe as Zeus. That's good I'm, casting. I'm game for this completely. I love that casting. Just uh, as long as it's not Liam Neeson. Right? Well, that wasn't his fault. Um, mm. I do I do like Russell Crowe in this role. I mean, you, you, you show the picture that you brought up there. I can see Russell Crowe as... Yeah, I can see that 100%. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. is he playing like an older Zeus? Is he going to have some more gray in his beard? Maybe. But regardless, I can see this. Now, I love what the prospects of this because, yes, if you have Zeus, you're going to have popular Marvel character Hercules pop up too. And I say popular in terms of he's popular within the comics, maybe not popular with general audiences, but at this point, we're long past characters that are popular with general audiences getting their movies in the MCU. So who cares? Um I, I'm down. I'm game. I'd be really interested to see who plays Hercules. It could be Henry Cavill. That'd be kind of cool. And then you could have uh, Jarrell and and Superman, <laughs> father son. You know? Nice. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? That, that would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. And I wonder if that if there's someone secretly at Marvel that w- wants to do like that kind of like little jab at the DCEU. Like, look, we'll make this father and son actually work. Well, until Zeus dies, and here's why I claim that, because remember the villain of this movie is Gore the God Butcher. So when you think about that, he's got to butcher a god. It makes sense for Zeus to be a part of this. Now, whether Zeus survives or not, we'll see. But But some kind of god is getting butchered, just saying. But some some gods are getting butchered here. So uh, I like this. Um, Mm -hmm. At this point, though, like you could claim anybody at all is in the history of acting is in this movie and i'm still gonna be game for it give it to me when's it come out i want to see it now let's do it no we still got a while (laughs) but here's the thing like remember that taika watiti is the director of this Mm -hmm. so think about every one think about every single actor who is coming on board of this movie and think about them working with taika watiti as their director yes please russell crowe sure absolutely let's do it yeah. <laughs> yes, Gar. So that's why that's DC, and this is going to be Marvel, and we're all going to like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, uh, next story. Uh, I guess, like, for the most part, a lot of this does seem to be very Disney heavy on the news stories tonight. So, uh, since we're in uh, talking about properties that Disney owns, let's move on to the next one. Uh, they're going to make a biopic, a biopic of uh jim henson yeah i guess called muppet man yeah muppet man uh not a whole lot known about this right now other than they've kind of just announced it uh i can't remember if they've actually said who's writing it who's who's putting the script on it or whatnot but i do believe it is in conjunction with uh with the muppet jim henson's like muppet factory whatever with with the muppet crew like they are doing this with like their production and their and their blessing and everything which is don't cast cavill as hercules <laughs> fair, fair um so yeah this is this is something i'm very interested in seeing what i'm more curious about is let's think about young jim henson who do we think could play young jim henson because they haven't casted it yet they've, they've only want, just announced it i want that guy that played jim henson in the epic rap battles i don't know who that is uh he does he does all the epic rap battles it was like him oh. him versus uh stan lee and then Walt Disney interrupted the rap or whatever. And it's like nice Peter or Epic Lloyd. One of those yeah, two it's guys. One of those two. Yes. Uh, so. so I liked him as Jim Henson. Now he, he's not going to star in a movie, but I did like his take on Jim Henson in that. Um, he had the look, he had the sound, the voice, everything that it worked great. But um, my question that I have on this is like, how much of this are they like, <sighs> how dark are they going to go with this kind of like uh if you look back Disney. at not yeah well like kind of like you go back and you look at bohemian rhapsody one of the stories about that was sasha barry cohen wanted to do a faithful adaptation of freddie mercury and he did kind of want to dive into some of the darker parts of freddie mercury's life and i guess the rest of the queen bandmates uh 
were like, no, we don't want to, we don't want to talk about that. We want to make this look like nice and honorable and whatnot. So that's why yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen stepped down and the movie kind of glossed over a lot of the darker parts of Freddie Mercury's life. Uh, Jim Henson also has a lot of very dark parts to his life that typically don't get talked about because he is more family friendly and the Muppets yeah. are all like cute and everything. So that gets glossed over are we going to venture into any of that or is it going to be like completely glossed over as well? Are we looking at like a PG biopic or a rated R biopic of Jim Henson showing like uh, the trials and tribulations he goes through when trying to create this empire? It'll be PG 13 at worst. And then it'll be a light PG 13. It's Disney. They're not going to go dark with it. I think that that answers your question right there. Look who's producing it. It's Disney. They're not going to, they're not going to dive too deep into any kind of dark material or anything. Um, what I'm interested in seeing though, is like just, I think what they're going to touch on is the story of the creation of the Muppets, the idea of how the Muppets came to be. And, and, you know, Jim Henson kind of all, all, all the different aspects of his like creative process in bringing them to life and whatnot. That'll be, I don't necessarily need to see like someone's dark history. I, I get it. I get why it works for like some mm -hmm. and why for some movies you maybe want that for, for this one. I don't, I don't know if I want to see the dark history of Jim Henson in a movie. Yeah. I, Cause then what happens was that clouds your opinion of how you look at the Muppets from then on. Yeah, probably. And that's probably one of the reasons why they won't do it too. Cause again, you got to remember Muppets is a property of Disney now. Mm -hmm. So they probably want to make more Muppet oriented products in the future, movies, shows, what have you. And it's going to be hard to do that if you're tainting Jim Henson's name in front of all of your viewers by in any stretch of the means. So probably not going to go too dark with it. Uh, here's let me toss this idea out for you, though. Ryan Gosling. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, now, granted, I, I know he did uh, Armstrong in first man, but give him another biopic. And how many historical characters has Chadwick Boseman ever played? A lot. So, yeah. <laughs> so, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Ryan Gosling off the top of my head. Uh, other one would be uh, like Paul Rudd. That's another idea too, but I don't know if either one of them would be able to do like the Muppet voices. I'm wondering if you could do like Ryan Gosling as a younger and then maybe like older, maybe go with like Tom Hanks as like an older Jim Henson. <laughs> no. And then have and, and, and then we'll have Tom Hanks's Jim Henson meet Tom Hanks's uh Fred Rogers and it'll be the the movie verse of the characters that you grew up with as a child. They need they to get all... Tom Tom Hanks as the frugal gourmet from PBS. That's what they need to cast. <laughs> so they, can, they can all go hang out at Disney World and and have a meeting with Walt Disney. Yeah, and with Tom, Tom Hanks, Hanks as Walt movie. Disney. Uh, have Tom Hanks play uh, Bob Ross from the <laughs> the Joy of Painting. <laughs> Just that's that's all of them. It's all Tom. I actually could see Tom Hanks playing like all these characters. That would be that'd be hilarious. And but, then oh, what's what's his name as uh, young Frank Oz? Um, he was in he he was in. Uh, Shoot, my mind's just blanking on everything right now. Cool, 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 cool. Sounds great. Oh, we might need to work, work on that recall. <laughs> What's that show that Will Arnett was in? Saturday Night Live? Really? No. <laughs> God, that's so dumb. Why would you say that? Um. Yeah, Will see, you're, oh, you need to work on that recall, and you can't even help me. I don't even know what show he was in. <laughs> oh, Arrested Development. Arrested Development. That's yeah. right. Why can't my brain think of I was thinking Will Forte, not Will Arnett. Yeah. Really? Will Forte. Okay, so long way around. Who I'm talking about is David Cross. Get yeah. David Cross as young Frank Oz. I mean, that's, that's actually that's actually pretty good casting. Look, I've already cast it. Ryan Gosling, David Cross, are their ages lined up appropriately? I don't know. I just picked but, you guys out of nowhere. That's what makeup and CGI is for. Oh, I don't need to know Arrested Development for the Schmodown. 
like ever. There's, <laughs> there's like a movie, but I think I don't think it'll. I don't know if it'll be asked questions about. Who cares? Uh, anyway. watch, it pop, watch it when you get a match. Watch it pop up there just because. Son <laughs> of a. <laughs> I'll be in the FCL. Anyway. I'll get that. I'll be like PLD. Dang it! How dare just you? Let's just say Ed Harris. Um. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, uh, uh, while we're talking about Disney, uh, I feel like you you probably know more about this next one than I do. If you want to talk about that one, uh, yeah. So, uh, I I read this probably like days ago now. I think this actually happened Wednesday last week. So once again, we have a situation where we do a tagline on Tuesday night, and then the following Wednesday, a bunch of movie news breaks, including this one where Sony has pinned a a refresh on their deal with Disney in terms of all the stuff that they're, they're doing together, including the Spider-Man characters in the Spider-Man universe. So, you know, that stuff is still a chugling along, but also that they have scratched the deal to put Sony property uh, movies up on Disney plus and Hulu and like all the, all the Disney services essentially. So you'll see stuff like those those Spider-Man movies that we've not had part of the MCU that's on Disney Plus finally be a part of the MCU on Disney Plus. Uh you get we'll get like Jumanji about tagline on Wednesdays. <laughs> you would think um you think that would make sense at this point. Nothing we do makes sense. Anyways, then the new, uh, then the news will come out on Thursday, so. Exactly. That's exactly what will happen. We'll just taglines a different day every week. Don't worry about it. Uh, we could just do this as a daily show, you know. <laughs> no <laughs> <last> time. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. So, like I said, Jumanji, the Jumanji movies will pop up there. Uh, all sorts of stuff. Anything else that kind of falls under uh, Sony's library that they can, that they are able to license out for a streaming service, will be going to either Disney Plus or Hulu, essentially. Which is a pretty big, pretty big deal because that is like a library of movies that has not had a concrete home. It's just kind of all floated around everywhere for the longest time. Because Sony's one of the last movie studios that has decided not to launch their own streaming service. Which Fair is enough. probably right now, that's probably the smart route to go. Yeah, because you don't want to be you don't want to be the last the last one in. You don't want to be the last person to come up with a streaming service because everyone will be like. I've already got the 85 other streaming services. We're not, we're not getting yours. Yeah. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. It, it will be nice because I do think like the Spider-Man movies are typically, typically when I'm laying in bed at night and I want to play a movie to kind of fall asleep to, I will throw on like, I'll go to Disney plus or HBO max and find maybe a Marvel or DC movie that I've seen billions of times already. And I'll just throw it on because it's, it's good. I, I enjoy watching them again and again and again, I'll throw those on. And the Spider-Man movies, unfortunately have been missing from that because they're not on either of those streaming services. So, yep. I'd have to go seek them out like on Netflix and pff, who subscribes to Netflix anymore. Jeez. Netflix was like, so last year, there's actually a lot of good stuff on Netflix still. There is. I'm still yeah. subscribed to Netflix. I'm just trying to yeah. like turn a phrase. <laughs> oh, I like this because, I mean, obviously this gives us the Tom Hall and Spider-Man's on Disney Plus kind of linking them back to the rest of the MCU that we have access to, which means Hopefully maybe we they get, get to the do the other ones too. I would say that maybe that means we get to do the Tom Hall and Spider-Man's as part of our watch along. So by the time we get to that point in the MCU, we will actually have them available on Disney Plus to do that with. Uh, but also that means we get into the Spider-Verse on Disney Plus which I am so down for. I think it's available somewhere, but I I do want to watch that movie again. Uh, I think that one was on uh, HBO. Was I know it? it was on a streaming service not too long ago. Oh, well, it probably still in. is somewhere, but... I need to look into that again. Either way, it's going to end up on Disney Plus at some point. But so. that, that might also give us, hopefully, the Sam Raimi original Spider-Mans and the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Mans, which I'll probably just watch one of those. Um... I have never seen the second Amazing Spider-Man movie, so there's parts sure. of it. There's parts of it that aren't that bad. It is. It, it's an entertaining movie. I guarantee you, you've seen movies way worse, and you thought like they're kind of enjoyable. So honestly, I think what I'll end up doing is I'll probably end up doing one day when I really just want to hate myself for some reason. I'll just do like a double feature of Amazing Spider-Man two and Fan Four Stick. 
That way I can just mm. knock them both out and have seen them both. Uh, the fan four stick might be a step too far. You don't need to go <laughs> that bad, okay? It's four steps too far. Ew. I mean, wow. like, right. fan four stick is, like, birdemic compared to Amazing Spider-Man 2's Nomad Land. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm trying comparison. to I'm trying to stay topical to current events, but yeah, that that was a comparison. Yeah, um, um, I've heard about this show. I don't know what it's about, but I've heard about it. I've heard other people talking about it, so it might be something to check out. <laughs> and since we're bringing up bad movies, uh, Malcolm likes to uh, chime in with being the only supporter of movie forty three. <laughs> There's some cute and slightly funny parts about movie 40. You really okay. say cute. Did yeah, you really well, put the word cute in there? Uh, I did, and then realized that there was a scene of that movie with Hugh Jackman having balls on his neck or chin or whatever. So, <laughs> like, maybe not everything is cute, but I won't even go into the what Anna Ferris and Chris Pratt are doing. Anyways, moving on. Um, so they're filming uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 right now. Yeah. And, uh, of course, as they're filming it, people are able to see the set. Well, one of the things that they've shown that people have been able to see on set is the stand-ins for Sonic and Tails, who Tails we already knew was going to be in this movie, but we hadn't had confirmation of Knuckles, the echidna, from the video games until a set picture was released showing them with knuckles on set. So I believe this was released and uh, I, I now I'm not 100% certain because I'm a fantastic journalist part-time doing this. Uh, I don't know if this was 100% confirmed. Uh, we know like Sonic and tails look like their, their movie counterparts. So I guess we just have to assume that this is, uh, how Knuckles is going to look as well, which is exactly like the video game. But I know every everyone everywhere that saw this picture all wants to know what does Knuckles' teeth look like, and we can't tell. So, yes. Here's the thing: I'm pretty I'm pretty pumped about this because I would have thought that they would have saved Knuckles for the third movie. Mm-hmm. And you know they'll be working on a third movie. It's going to happen. Give us more of a tease, like maybe at the end of this movie with like a uh, robot, Nick capturing knuckles and making him into his, I don't know, his Butler or whatever. Well said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I could see, I could see the three of them going against robot neck in this movie. And then maybe like you have like shadow or somebody in the third, they're going to end up bringing in newer Sonic characters that you don't even know about because you stopped playing video games long before any of these characters were introduced. Mm-hmm. Um, I can Knuckles see them going was like route. the Knuckles was on the tails end of the video games that I played. I'm going to speed away from that one very quickly. Yes. Anyway. Um, so I like this. I mean, I think he looks good in terms of does he look anywhere close to what he will look like in the movie? Sure. I guess. But I'm interested. It looks good. I'm glad that they're kind of we're kind of getting this confirmation, so to speak, that Knuckles is going to be playing a part of it because I like that character. Knuckles is yeah. Knuckles is probably mm, probably my favorite Sonic character. Mm-hmm. Not that I've really thought about having favorite Sonic characters, but still, so. I liked playing as him because he like glides and stuff, and you were able to get like di- to different places that Sonic and Tails just could not reach because they couldn't fly and glide and whatnot yeah. so yeah I, I or crawl up the wall he also climbs up the wall with the spikes on his knuckles he's hey, got I think, s- I, under, I think i understood where the day comes from wait a minute what he's got I... knuckles yeah and this is true that they did show the race of echidnas at the beginning of the of the sonic movie so mm-hmm. you know we could be looking at a different knuckles the echidna so, yeah, I don't know. I'm into it. That's a quick yeah. little story there. Fun, fun little one. Uh, <laughs> and last one before we move on to uh, essentially the main topic. Uh, so as we mentioned earlier, their uh, fat wuss is over. It's now known as cat wuss. Um, <laughs> cat wuss ended this past week. 
and like promptly right as it was ending, like the day that it was released, uh, they announced that the uh, the showrunner Malcolm Spellman was working on Captain America four for the MCU. So we're Which, one, we're gonna get one whole movie of Sam Wilson as Captain America. Here's the thing: I don't know what I saw coming m- more. Uh, Ag- Ag- Agatha Harkness being a part of WandaVision. <laughs> Sharon being the power broker, or someone that we think is the power broker at least, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, or Captain America 4 happening. This is spoilers if uh, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been living literally underneath a rock, aka yeah. dead. Um, Deadsies. <laughs> what was that middle one? Deadsies? Deadsies. There's your Scrubs reference, guys. There's a Scrubs uh, reference for the night, yeah. So, yes. Uh, yes, yes, and more yes. Absolutely. I loved the tone of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm 100% on board with the showrunner being involved with Captain America 4. I think that's perfect, and I think that's exactly the direction that they need to go. And I just trust everything that Marvel does at this point. I'm wondering, like, what what's the storyline they could go with it? What else could they dive into um i'm guessing as as we continue through the other movies as this one's being developed there might be like hints of where they're trying to go uh i know the tv show was kind of setting up a possibility for the thunderbolts uh but i almost feel like the thunderbolts could probably be its own uh marvel show instead of instead of them being a movie and i would actually probably want to see it more as a marvel show anyways so kind of let them have their Marvel's answer to the Suicide Squad be in a, in a TV show format other mm-hmm. than a... Um, I don't know. I like it. Uh, I think we definitely need to see some Captain America movies with, with Anthony Mackie. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, thank yeah. y'all for still watching us and we appreciate y'all as fans. <laughs> yes, appreciate it. Um, so... Uh, I, I'm glad to see this. I, I do believe, yes, we get Anthony Mackie as Captain America. I think that's exactly the direction we need to go. Is he going to be signed on for three movies? Hopefully. Give him his own three-movie arc as Captain America before maybe you pass it on to, say, Patriot. So, yeah, pass off to uh, off to uh, young Bradley, who's Patriot. Also, can he portray Captain America like in a Avengers movie where he's potentially leading the team now that we don't have Captain America or Iron Man to help lead the the current Avengers? Will he step up and be the leader of it? I mean, we still we got we got new Captain America and we've got uh, War Machine. So, yeah, I think we're I think we're still good on on those fronts, but. And then of course, you still got the Wakanda tech. So if you need someone to bankroll some technology, you've got folks back in Wakanda who are able to do so. So which they've already they, done so far. So they've already done so far. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I think uh, here's the thing. I think you see Tony Stark as a character being replaced with an entire nation. Vernon, he 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 died in that movie that came out exactly two years ago. <laughs> yeah um i can't believe it's been two years that's ridiculous yeah so yeah because all of last year doesn't doesn't count doesn't it count us. we all get to live an extra year longer because we all had to suffer through last year hey that'd be wonderful I <laughs> <think> that. <laughs> maybe <laughs> so yeah tell me like your polka dot man we're gonna die hopefully um but uh yeah so i'm i'm glad to see this i'm glad to see us get captain america 4 uh yeah definitely interested in seeing what they could do with it i mean there's how many captain america bad guys out there have we not touched on can we still are, are we still able to bring back arnim zola you know are we you know is red skull able to come back in some capacity i want to you know, see modok you know we want to see modok he's like everyone's villain though he's not necessarily like a captain america villain yeah, he's like pro- probably more primarily known with Iron Man, if anything. But yeah, but I, I would have said th- I would have said the same about Mandarin. He's showing up on uh, Shang Chi instead of Iron Man. So, oh, by the way, we're not doing a breakdown show of the Modok show on Hulu. 
I probably no. will be checking it out though because it looks hilarious. Uh, yeah, I'll probably watch it because I do like uh, Patton Oswalt doing that character. So, um, yeah. Anyways, but. let's move on to our main topic, which is going to heavily rely on me doing a lot of talking. Yep. Good night, everybody. <laughs> well, that's a whole lot of my face all over the screen. Yeah, um, I'll fix that. Anyways, uh, so this. <laughs> This past week, uh, we got uh, Mortal Kombat came out, the new updated reboot, and I had the full-on pleasure of watching this movie uh, the other night. That's a weird thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to sidestep some of this because uh, there's enough people that are just trashing this movie already on the internet, um, and I don't want to be another person that does that. So I'm going to start off right off the bat. Um, I do like... I, I, I do like where they were trying to go with this. This was more rooted in the history, the lore of the Mortal Kombat video games. Uh, so I love that they did that. I love that uh, essentially they came in with with some people that were trying to take this property seriously. I say trying because uh, I mean, they did kind of still leave it to uh, like this was uh, was it Simon McQuaid was the was the director. This was his first movie. So they didn't pass this on to someone who's a more well-known uh, director, someone that could handle a movie of this magnitude with as large of a fan base as it has. They couldn't pass it off to someone like them that could bring in more gravitas to this movie. They gave it to a new director. And again, uh, maybe I'm crazy, but like, does everyone else in Hollywood realize and understand how the general public, the world already views video game movies are we not we're not going to try to like let's bring in something that's going to really help i mean right now your video your best video game movies are sonic the hedgehog and detective pikachu so uh like i i feel like they could have done just a little bit better but storyline wise it i thought it was good that it w how closely tied it was to the video games um the the first thing that really caught my attention when watching it and i'm not gonna dive in i guess too much into spoiler material here uh this one the one i will mention though is pretty much all over the internet anyways there's no mortal combat in mortal combat the actual tournament does not happen in this movie spoilers um so i know a lot of people were were kind of like upset about that like how are you not going to have Mortal Kombat in a Mortal Kombat movie. Uh, yeah. To find out that they are planning for this to be at least a trilogy. I know jo Joe Taslim, who played Sub Zero, has signed on for four movies total. Uh, if this one was successful, yeah, I didn't Anyways, see the movie. I can't say anything. Yeah. So uh, the idea is that this movie is setting up, is trying to pull all the competitors together, which is what it's doing. Uh, and then the next movie will be the actual tournament. And then there's the movie after that, which is going to deal with the fallout of the tournament. So as someone who's not a screenwriter or making movies myself, what I'm going to foresee is this movie was setting up the characters, pulling them together. The next one's the tournament in which the good guys win. And then the third movie is all the bad guys are all upset that they lost in the second movie. So they're just like, screw it. We're just going to take over Earth Realm anyways. And then there's even more battles without it actually being w limited to within the tournament. That's how I foresee that this franchise is going to go. Well, you know how I foresee how this franchise is going to go based off of what the internet is saying about this first one? So what's going to happen is this movie, they're setting up the tournament. That's it. <laughs> I'm glad you're here with your input on this. There will not be a second and a third. Um, I, 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 I could see them possibly doing a second just because again, this movie was, this movie was set up to be what leads to the actual tournament. The problem with that though, is when you make a movie, you want your individual, your first movie to stand on its own, which if this, if this particular reboot of the Mortal Kombat movies is if this is where it la if this is its own movie and they don't make another one, it doesn't stand on its own. It is going to need that second movie to kind of really help support what was set up in this one. Yeah. And I, I like I, I kind of hope we get it just to help fix 
how this movie is. And that might be one of those where like you look back at this movie and you might appreciate this movie a lot more after the second one came out, uh, much like what people were saying about uh, The Last Jedi and uh, Rise of Skywalker, that you saw Rise of Skywalker. Hopefully that, that helps support the stuff they did in the last Jedi, but that's not what this this review is about. <laughs> yeah, my brother's like losing his mind over here. Like, don't that didn't go happen there at all. But okay, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, I I think it's going to need that second movie, and I actually do hope it gets a shot. But yeah, that's the thing. This is a Super Mario Brothers movie was set up. Yeah, here's the thing: stop doing that. Stop setting up movies for sequels. Do your darndest to try to make the first one really really good and don't worry about the story for the second two Mm -hmm. i get if you want to have a trilogy going out but you just can't rely on that especially like in a genre of video game movies you just can't rely on that you just can't yeah um so in comparison to the original mortal i would still actually rank the original 95 mortal Kombat higher than this one uh, but this movie is w- way above <laughs> Annihilation. Like, this movie is uh, the nomad land <laughs> compared to Annihilation's Topical. Birdemic. <laughs> Topical. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, I, I still I still like the 95. Now, the problem is, again, 95 isn't that... It, it's not that close to the actual storyline of the Mortal Kombat video games. Uh, at least this one was close to the history of it. It got the fatalities in there, uh, which the other thing I would talk about is the fatalities and the the special effects of this movie looked no better than a sci-fi channel movie. So uh, step up your uh, special effects budget there. Uh, this looked like Sharknado as far as the special effects go and just... Uh, so, yeah, eh, I like the third Back to the Future, but that's that's my favorite Western movie of all time. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and the only other thing that I, I I feel like to maybe kind of nitpick on a little bit was the acting. Just some of the acting, some of the lines. Uh, Raiden was pretty much there, like almost every time he opens his mouth, he goes from like actual regular conversation interacting with characters to all of a sudden he's spouting, uh, he's e- expositing all over the place, and that was a little weird because you could kind of tell, like, from the way he's talking, the break in there just going straight into like, oh, okay, and here's how we're going to set this up. You, the audience, follow along if you'd like type of thing. And it was like, it, it, it didn't work very well. So I, I would like a tighter script, better acting. Um, I, I mean, heard Kano, lot- Kano was the, uh, the scene stealer. I could see why between Kano, K- Kano, Kano and Cabal, I was trying to combine them just to save all these like letters, all these words that begin with K <laughs> Kano and Cabal Kano. Uh, Kano. <laughs> uh, between the two of them, they both uh, was it Cabal was Cabal was voiced by the guy Wait. who played uh, Charles Manson in once upon a time in Hollywood. It was weird. Oh, hold on. The other, the other option there is uh, Cabano, which makes me really hungry. Uh, Cubano. Yeah. Cubano. We're going to watch it. We're going to watch uh, Chef again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyways, uh, yeah, so Cabal was... Don't, was don't make, get your ship was, stuck. Yeah, that's the Suez Canal. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, Cabal was uh, just running out the mouth, making jokes the whole time, and Kano's like, he's just basically talking tough, and like every other word is the F word, so... Eh. Like, I get why people like Kano. He had some chucklish moments, but... He's really, sassy. the over the overall acting of this just was not good. And you had like they actually did have some good some good actors in this. Uh, Shang Tsung was played by uh, Han, the guy who played Han in Dark Knight. Yeah. So uh, was it uh, Raiden was played by uh, the guy who was in uh, Thor, one of the Warriors Three. Hogan. Hogan. That's it. Yeah, I couldn't remember his name. <laughs> so yeah, you have you have some some good decent actors in this, but the script and what they had to work with just uh not not good, y'all. <laughs> Here's so, the thing, Ver- Vernon makes a really good point. Sharknado makes enough to have six films, and to Vernon's point, I will say that yes, they absolutely can do 
a sequel and a third one to this Mortal Kombat series, but it'll probably end up on sci-fi or go to a streaming yeah. service, which I think might, if honestly, like if you do that and these production houses aren't distributions that they can't make it work for more theatrical releases, you st- stick the sequels on HBO max. I think you, I think that's your easiest route. If you can't get theatrically, put it on HBO max. It'll do well. It'll do well enough on HBO Max. Just like we're seeing with this one. You're saying it's not great. A lot of people are saying it's not great. It's doing pretty decently well, at least, for the home viewing. I will say it's entertaining. It's a little slow there in the middle, but it was entertaining. Mm -hmm. I did enjoy watching it, even though there was stuff I was wanting to nitpick about. Um, But, I mean, it it was still enjoyable. I might actually watch it again at some point. But... Especially if they come out with the second one, you're going to need... Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot to mention this. The Mortal Kombat Legacy, the web series. Uh, also, not really rooted in the actual history, the lore of Mortal Kombat, but it was good. Like, you had you had people that took it seriously. Uh, I guess they... If I remember correctly, the original like show that they did uh, was like self-funded. And... It, it it looked like it was going to be good, and they should have gone. I, I know the guy who did that. Uh, he he approached them at like, "Hey, can I make a full movie? Here's what I've made so far. People like this. Will you allow me to make a movie?" And they're like, "Eh, no. Just just go do your web series and stick with that." So that would have been a little bit better. Um, <laughs> the only other thing is like what I did appreciate from this movie is the casting of it. The the people that they got that were fighters in this. Um, like I mentioned, uh, Joe Taslam uh, from the Raid Redemption. Uh, you got Hiroyuki Sonata. Uh, he was in Avengers Endgame. He was the like the mob boss that uh, Jeremy Renner, Jeremy Garner, whatever, uh, was trying to uh, kill at the beginning of Endgame. Uh, he was also... Uh, in the Wolverine, uh, so I mean, you got people who are known for for like their fighting, their acting abilities, and you just you didn't give them too much. That sh- the fight between Sub Zero and Scorpion at the end, though, that was good. <laughs> I did kind of enjoy that. So, um, yeah, so yeah i mean kind of this thing too yeah it it is a mortal Kombat movie so that's why i say it's entertaining but like i would have said the same in areas i would have said the same thing like for a while there especially in the 80s and 90s it didn't seem like anyone could make a good comic book movie either and then finally we broke through and we started getting good comic book movies now we're getting comic book movies that are being nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars, which after our Oscar talk at the beginning of the show, I don't know if that really matters too much anymore. But uh, so, uh, but you can make a good video game movie. Just someone go do it. Just make a good video game movie. Put uh, put as much effort and thought into it as you would and uh, any other movie that you want to be good. I feel like we're always like looking at the next video game movie coming out and going, that's going to be the next one. Like we got Uncharted is on its way. And mm-hmm. while Tom Holland looks nothing like Nathan Drake, maybe they're going for a younger one, I guess, probably. Uh, we're kind of hoping maybe maybe this one will be a good one. Maybe this one will be a good one. Uh, again, I loved Sonic. I loved Detective Pikachu. I thought both of those were really well done. Maybe those are our video game movies that we stick with from now on. But it doesn't sound like this Mortal Kombat is one that we stick with. Yeah. Uh, so overall, in, in closing, if I'm going to rate this movie, what do we rate? Based off of 10 now? Yep. If I'm rating out of 10, this one's going to be a four. It's entertaining. I might throw it on again at some point, especially if they do make another movie. And especially if that next movie uh, is much better then yeah, I'll want to go back and watch this one in relation to it just to kind of help build it up. But uh, on its own, uh, it's not winning anything right now. On On its own, it is testing your might to be able to sit down and watch it. Oh, good Lord. We're... Yeah, just you're gonna take the time and do that. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, because it deserved that. It was good. Anyways, that's it. That's my review of it. Let's wrap this show up.
So well, Malcolm said maybe the Tetris movie that's in the works will be the first great video game movie. Uh, it's, it's not going to count. Yeah. Not going to count because it is about the creator of Tetris. So therefore, it's not technically a video game movie in yeah. terms of it, how we traditionally. <laughs> but yes, otherwise you're probably right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, anyways, let's. Well, anyone got anything positive? I feel like I want to like climb off of like the negativity mountain there and just say something nice and positive and stuff. And yeah, Captain America Four is happening. Let's go back to that. Oh, one. that's right. That's gonna be good. That'd be cool. That's Anthony awesome. Mackie. That's my Captain America right there, Sam Wilson. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna start wrapping this up. So if y'all got any other questions, comments, anything else y'all want to drop in, opinions, thoughts, feelings, whatever, drop those in right now. Again, we still got Streamlabs open, Super Chat, uh, the regular chat that's over here, <laughs> regular chat, all that. That's still open if y'all want to hop on there. Uh, let's go through real quick and uh patreon so patreon.com slash cinefanatics uh more stuff coming up including a movie trivia scrimmage night that will be this coming thursday night so hop on that maverick tier if you want to be a part of that uh we will have more wash alongs we will have uh what else do we do over there we do things we have more things that will happen over there if you hop on at least the one dollar you have access to our discord and uh a lot of discord stuff like we might drop like little bits and pieces of stuff that we're working on that is not publicly known. We might talk about it a little bit on the discord or stuff like that. And yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he, he, he is a positive. He's a positive around here too. So I try. Um, <laughs> can we talk about Robert's FCL match again? That no. was positive. No, we don't need to feed his <laughs> ego. It's okay. Uh, no, but if you are on that $25, uh, the Maverick tier on the Discord, we do we will be doing a uh, watch along and like thoughts, feelings, and opinions. So when Breakdowns. the two of yeah, so when the two of us do have matches, uh, we'll go back and rewatch that match and be like, yeah, here's what was actually going on in my head. Uh, I do we do have the breakdown for my match that's up there right now, so that one is available even if you're at a dollar. Uh, you can see that, but all the future ones uh, will be at the Maverick tier as well. So you can join us for movie trivia and then also come back and watch uh, my my or his thoughts, feelings, and opinions. There are future ones coming, so you're going to want to be signed up for that tier because they are coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of uh, stuff that's happening right now. So, yep. Anyways. Uh, um, there you go. So, how about that Loki series in a couple months? That's going to be cool, huh? It is going to be cool. I'm excited about that. Uh, we are going to be doing a watch along uh with the Loki series, and if you were a part of our Thor watch along, uh, you might have some more information about that. But yeah, we're we're going to do something a little different with that Loki watch along. So, uh, stay tuned for more information on that as we get closer to it. Uh, mm -hmm. I know before the Loki watch along, we are doing or breakdown, not watch along. Uh, before the Loki breakdown, we will be doing breakdowns to the Bad Batch, but that's not going to be including me. That's going to be him and probably someone else. Who's that someone else again? That will be one of the movie guys, the incomparable Adam Wit, the Razor, the Razor Wit. Uh, and there's a reason why he has that nickname. He is such a blast to be around, and I can't actually wait to have him be a part of the Bad Batch breakdowns. Uh, again, looking to have another guest involved in there as well, but until I have a firm confirmation as to what episodes they'll be able to be a part of, for now, just know that on this first one, Adam Wit will be with me. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a ton of fun. I can't wait. It's gonna be a blast. You guys should definitely tune in. Um, wait, real we, quick, what you what you need to do is release the name of the other person, so then everyone that's like on our patreon or in this chat right now just goes to that other person's like twitter like hey participate with the cine fanatics on that <laughs> that would be funny <laughs> yeah so that's you know that's not something i actually want to i don't want to i don't want to corner someone like that oh, goodness uh <laughs> anyway moving on so yes <laughs> Uh, we are going to have Adam Witt as a part of the Bad Batch breakdown, and I, I, I just can't wait. It's going to be a ton of fun. I know that's going to concurrently run with Loki there for a little bit, so guys, stay tuned. I know for this first one, for the Bad Batch, it's going to be on Friday. 
It's going to be on Friday evening, like we typically do or typically did for one division and Falcon and the winter soldier. We're going to do that again for bad batch this Friday, but uh, that things might shift around once Loki starts, or maybe we'll do Loki uh, breakdowns on Saturday. We'll see. We'll just have to see what everyone, how everyone's schedule aligns since we're kind of balancing with multiple people uh, on some of these. So we will, we will see what happens there. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Um, uh, what else do we want to plug? Uh, I know, uh, tomorrow night I'm going to be over on the Pajukin, the PJ Pajukin. Campbell network talking about Meteora, the second Lincoln park album. Uh, I've already talked about the first one hybrid theory. So we'll be doing the second one that is tomorrow night. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, then you've got your thing that's coming up. I got my thing that's coming up guys. Again, as I said at the top of the show, those of you who are now tuned in and weren't then now get to here. This Friday is my first stream on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. It's going to be a fun one. I'm going to be going in the afternoon. That's 11 Pacific time, 1 Central time, 2 Eastern time, probably for about four, four and a half hours. Uh, we'll go ahead and get you guys out of there before the uh, throwdown this Friday starts. So the Schmodown throwdown. So you guys don't have to try to juggle supporting me and the schmo down because i know that y'all lovely people would definitely do both um at the same time so <laughs> anyway uh it's gonna be a fun it's gonna be a fun one i'm excited i'm looking forward to this this is something that i've been planning for a while and just kind of trying to feel out when was the right time to get it started and as it turns out a game that i loved back when i was a uh, youngin on the n64 is getting its sequel 20 plus years later on the Nintendo Has it Switch. Been that that is, long already? Jeez. Yes, it has. I'm N64's, old. Yeah, N64 is kind of an old system now, given game system lifespans. Uh, so, new Pokemon Snap comes out this Friday. I will be picking it up in the morning and playing it that afternoon. So, if you guys want to hang out, uh, I know our, our audience here that we specifically have in this stream is a huge group of Pokemon fans. Um, but <laughs> maybe more so you're just fans of me and you just want to come support me. And that would be, that would be just, that would be just peaches guys. That would be just peaches. Uh, would love that. So if you guys want to come hang out and support and follow and all the fun Twitch stuff over there, I'm trying to hopefully like build up somewhat of an audience for my first one now so that we can kind of get the, get the ball rolling on building a community over there. So that when I do hit affiliate, we can start doing like some big community games with subscribers and, and whatnot. So it'll be a ton of fun, ton, a ton of fun, but yeah. yeah, this Friday in the afternoon, it'll be a blast. Yay. And as, Oh yeah. <laughs> Yay. Pokemon Pokemans. Um, as Garth is pointing out, uh, apparently my match is on the Schmodown extras youtube channel so make sure you subscribe sure. to that over there it's nice and edited and condensed it it's pretty so nice and shiny uh, and yeah I'm, i i i i kind of want to do this potentially pretty soon oh yeah i i kind of want to do this never you should do i won't it. be on i won't be on that <laughs> one um anyway we can do it we can do it but i won't be on that one you'll have a guest on that one instead of me <laughs> it'll, it'll be vernon uh so <laughs> sounds good I'm game. Anyways, um, I think that's it. I don't see like any other, nothing else in the super chats or stream labs or whatever this thing is called. Uh, so anyways, let's wrap this up. Uh, of course, y'all know you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Cinefanatics MLP. You can find me at Robert Adams MLP, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox. And I believe my brother can also be found on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox at Chris Adams MLP, and now oh, on Twitch. Starting <laughs> to notice a trend here about where all you can find me at that name. Yeah, but it's pretty <laughs> everywhere. much everywhere. Yeah, branding. Yeah, it works good. So, anyways, uh, thank y'all for all watching tonight. Those of y'all in the chat, if you're watching this on a replay later on, thank you for watching us there as well. Make sure y'all all drop us a like because we like likes. And also, uh, if you're watching on a replay, give us a comment. What do you? What is it that like you did like or didn't like? What hot opinions did I have that you just don't agree with? Let me know down in the comments. 
Yeah, not not that one, Garth. No, I'm I'm not found there. <laughs> should not should tell Chris that we're watching Pokemon and switch it up and play Nightmare. And I'm pretty sure he's gonna know real quick that we're not watching Pokemon. Like within like two seconds of playing Nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> it starts with Freddy Cougar building his claw thing. So, <laughs> uh, doesn't sound anyways. like I want to be the very best. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna catch them all. I mean, they just got to be asleep first. Uh, anyways, um, and also, y'all. Share this video, share share our channel, share it with everyone that you know. Run down the street screaming the name of Cinefanatics because you won't look like a crazy person at all. And everyone will know exactly what you're talking about. Because again, we're going to be the only YouTube channel that's talking about movies in the future. I guarantee that's not going to happen. <laughs> and then if also... It happen, if it hasn't happened this last year, it's not going to happen, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, and then also, please help us out. Give us a subscribe. Hit the subscribe button down below. Click that bell if you want to know exactly when we go live. Uh, if you're not following us on the social media and seeing that we're about to go live, hit that bell. Hopefully, YouTube is notifying you that we're about to go live. And so you can be here at the top of the show when we first go live because we do all kinds of funny, zany things there. Not really. Uh, anyways. Is that it? That sounds good to me. Okay. I think we nailed so it. Anyways, as for myself, as for my brother, thank uh, all of y'all in the chat again for being here. And we will see y'all probably in a couple of nights or so when we're doing something else. Anyways, later. See ya.